Hey guys, Jeff here, and before we get to today's episode, I wanted to let you know about our Season 4 sponsor, Adventure Is Out There Travel. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a pretty good chance that you're in the middle of planning your next Disney vacation right now. So why not make it easier for yourself? By working with an Adventure Is Out There travel agent, you'll be having an experienced vacation planner doing the heavy lifting for you. Adventures Out There Travel specializes in making sure your entire group gets to experience the type of activities they want in order to make your trip even more magical. Whether heading to a Walt Disney World vacation in Orlando, flying west to Disneyland, or floating on the high seas in a Disney cruise, Adventures Out There Travel can help you plan the vacation of a lifetime. Visit AdventuresOutThereTravel.com for your free, no-obligation quote today. Now on with the show! Are you craving a trip on Space Mountain? Well, we've got the next best thing. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Aaron Fairbanks. Aaron Fairbanks. (laughs) It's the most wonderful time of the year. Not quite, actually. At Disney. At Disneyland. (laughs) At Disney Parks. At Disney Parks, that's true. My most wonderful time of the year is Halloween. That's over. But um, Disneyland is in full swing for the holidays. Last week, Patrick and I talked about the the holidays at Walt Disney World. So this week, we're going to attack in a Disney dialogue some uh, Disneyland magic, shall we? Whoa! Get ready to dig deep in today's Disney dialogue. Okay, Aaron, so did you happen to see the holiday commercial for the Disneyland Resort? Yes, I did. It's gotten quite a bit of buzz, which I find really interesting. Really? (laughs) Yes. People have really kind of been, uh, I don't want to say freaking out, but there's been a lot of comments about this commercial because it features the Skyway, which has been gone from the park for a long time. I think 92 is when they got rid of the Skyway buckets. I mean, how is this any different than the Vault Okay, well, that's the thing. So this is, if you remember, do you remember D23? Who was it? Was it Chapek? Somebody somebody was like, and uh, you're going to be seeing more of that because because that got such a great response right. the whole uh, the main street electrical no, they return. showed that commercial yeah at the just expo. to be like wasn't that some great marketing <laughs> but it was like oh I, yeah it was I, fantastic I, I remember when that came out people were like in love with the idea of but that of was being, really cool well that was the thing i was like that announcement like made me think are they are we gonna have some sort of place to visit the archives now or is there you know, something or is something else going to be returning yeah. from it so that was an exciting announcement at the expo but the fact that the sky buckets are in a commercial for disneyland no. holiday time it doesn't excite me they all will, that much they will never put those back no in they disneyland. won't be returning i don't think no. that's what it means i think i basically i think the announcement meant like hey we're gonna do a lot more commercials with retro stuff yeah which <laughs> To me, kind of, it's a bit of a gunt, a gut punch because I was gonna say a gunt punch. A gunt punch. I don't know what that is a gut punch. That's German uh, fruit punch. Oh, okay. Holiday punch. All righty then. Yeah. Um, so, t- t- to me, like that stuff lives in a warehouse, and sure, the Main Street Electrical was released. Uh, parade was released from the warehouse. Like that's <laughs> one thing. No, it wasn't. Well, yeah, it was I mean, in it was in Disney Florida. World. It was in the warehouse for like a month. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so like that makes sense to me. But like using the Skyway buckets as if they're still in the park, I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. Why are you doing this? I yeah. don't like it. So, uh, but there was quite a bit of. I, you didn't see it. The Twitterverse went a little bit cray cray. I did not see that. Although the biggest lie about this commercial was not the Skyway back in the park. Do you want to know what the biggest lie in this commercial was? Uh, That the holidays begin there? No. Oh. The crowds in the park (laughs) were completely (laughs) false. When you go on Christmas Day, there's about 18 other people in the park. Let me tell you, it was quiet the day that they shot that commercial because uh, I remember like World of Color, there was like nobody watching it and like in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle all lit up hardly anybody there i was like oh that's that's some false advertising right there (laughs) but uh regardless there is some stuff going on a lot of it's returning so we'll just tell you about that and then give some of our own thoughts about it let's start over at disney california adventure shall we yeah what's going on there 
Uh, well, one of my favorite things is the Festival of Holidays, mm. which which I guess is kind of all encompassing for that area, right? Yeah, all of DCA pretty much right as you enter. Well, I shouldn't say right as you enter, but just beyond the fountain, there's all the booths set up and it yeah. kind of leads to the Paradise Pier area. Um, um, so Festival of Holidays for me means uh, booths with food. Is that what? Okay. I love the booths with food. I don't get any of it. No? No. It's It's... It's a mix of several things. I don't want to wait in that line. I don't, the food never You excites. know what? There there was no lines when we went on Friday. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good. It was like walk up to the booth, order. Also, another thing I was really impressed, I, I think last year, it, every time we went to a booth, they were sold out of something. Oh, okay. And this year it was like they had fully, they were fully stocked. So I think they were prepared for the crowds and then a lot of the crowds didn't show up. So... <laughs> They were extra prepared. Well, there you yeah. go. So the food does it for you. Yeah. All right. Part of the festival of the holidays as well is um, they have a lot of performances. Oh, that yeah. go on over by Paradise Pier. Uh, Disney Viva Navidad is very popular. Your favorite. Um, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's yeah. super high energy. I know, I know what your favorite part about it is, though. Mm, what? The floats that do like oh the floats that dance that's right yeah I forgot about that I haven't seen it yet this year but you're yeah. right last year I was very impressed by the yeah. floats that do although Elena's not there right she I think she's still doing oh her is show. she okay yeah, Princess Elena's musical grand arrival what can you give me a sample no I have no Elena of Avalor uh, Elena Elena of Avalor. Yeah. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that was it. Okay, cool. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, some other, and over by Paradise Pier, over by the entrance of there, they have performances all day long, all different groups. I have to say, my favorite is probably the Holiday Toy Drummers. I think that they're fun, but they have a Yeah, they moved. Bin. Yeah, did that. Where were they before? Because well, they used to, like, uh, kind of go through. They kind of they walked through the crowd where mm. the booths are. Okay. At the entrance of. I actually don't know what that area is called. What's there? At the end of Buena Vista Street where you like first enter the Festival of Holidays. Oh, okay, there? Yeah, yeah. So they would go through there. And I think probably with crowds, they were just like, we're not going to have them navigate this again. Yeah, they've definitely put all the performers in one space over in front of the water by Paradise Pier, which is nice. They have their own little stage and everything. Yeah. Uh, if you want to meet Santa, he's at the Redwood Creek Tra Challenge Trail. I kind of, you know, I was thinking about this. I feel like Santa gets downplayed tremendously at the Disneyland Resort. Well, he's not IP, so. I guess not. Like, <laughs> he's hidden kind of in the Red uh, Redwood Creek Trail. Yeah. And then over at Disneyland, he's like hidden. Of course, uh, you know, he goes back and forth. Um, but he, <laughs> over at Disneyland, he's over by uh, Pooh Corner, which is like way out of the way. Yeah. And unless you're watching the, the parade, you're really like you can easily go through the day without seeing Santa Claus at holiday time at Disneyland. So I think that's a little crazy. Yeah. But um You know what? Uh you know who's making a big comeback this holiday though? Ooh, uh, Olaf? Claire Bell. Oh yeah, she uh, I was like, whoa, who yeah. Claire Bell's over there. Well, when she sang that uh song last year at Walt Disney World about texting at Christmas, yeah. it really made her popular. But I was surprised yeah. like I don't think she's ever I've never seen her. I've never her seen her at DC at at Disney. Yeah. I don't think at Disneyland ever. No. I don't think I've ever seen her. No. Um so. maybe we're gonna be getting some more of her somewhere. Well, I think like I I hope. I don't want I don't want uh I hope if we're getting Clairebo, we get Horace too. Sure. Yeah, what, whatever. I just think they're cool designs, you know? Okay, you're a fan of them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Of course, one of the big things is World of Color Season of Light. Oh, have you watched that yet this year? Not this year. Oh, my God. It's the, did it's, you watch it this yes, year? Yes, yeah. I did. Same, though, oh, right? Same. I, there may have been some small changes. It's not like I memorized yeah. it last year. The Goofy is still there. The Goofy the is still part. there. Yeah. A major bummer for me, though, is like, what, when you say the Goofy is the best part, yes, it is. But there is a beautiful part, the whole let there be peace on Earth. Yeah. At the end, where, at the end they have all these beautiful hearts floating up toward the sky. Let me just say, Disneyland Resort was not ready for the holidays the first weekend, because that's when I went. Yeah. Everything was not complete. Oh. Cars Land was not fully decorated. The, yeah, seriously. Like, wow. Because I think because of Halloween. You went on the 18th? I went on like the 10th, the 11th. The 10th was the Friday, I went on the 11th. I thought the 18th was when everything was supposed to start. 10th. 
Oh. Yeah, I know. And uh, it should have been the 18th because they weren't ready on the 10th. Interesting. And all of the the heart machine things floating towards it, they weren't all working. And I was like waiting for it because I just remember that being like a really emotional moment last year. And I was like, oh, this isn't working yet. Foam hearts. Yeah. It's the way to Jeff's heart. It, it, it was it was really beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, it was really, really beautiful. So, so, but in any case, World of Colors Season of Light is back. If you have not seen it and you have the go. opportunity, go. Do it. It is the best world of color hands down wait what about uh no don't even say it. <laughs> celebrate no but what about celebrate no that, that's no. the worst world you know of what color. they should add neil patrick harris <laughs> no well, if we had a neil patrick harris electrocution like they do the goofy thing i mean that could be entertaining get ready <laughs> come on i mean he's about to be eliminated from the parks altogether totally, yeah i yeah. mean i actually haven't seen, you know how i've, I've always said, you know, oversaturated with Neil Patrick Harris. I haven't seen him in a while. It's yeah. been a while. I just see him in documentary. Come recently. back, Neil. Uh, moderately. <laughs> Come back moderately. It's cool. I'm telling you, one of these days I'm going to interview him on this show, and it's going to be really awkward if he goes back and watches some old episodes. I have nothing against him. Nothing. Except for the fact that he was oversaturated at one point. Yeah. That's it. So don't don't write the hate emails. I have nothing against the man. Uh, <laughs> what else is going on? Of course, Cars Land is a big part of the holidays at Disney California Adventure. They plussed it this year. They did. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are you talking about the the music at the Luigi's and stuff? Yeah. I think that was around last year. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They may have changed some of the songs, uh, but they have uh, Luigi's Joy to the World. Which, uh, which is originally called what? Luigi's... Uh, Rollick and Roadsters. Yes. Yeah, so now it's Luigi's Joy to the World, where they, uh, you know, in a very Italian style, sing Jingle Bells and uh, wish you, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Yeah. It's fun. You know, that that <laughs> ride, I think, is more fun to look at than to actually ride. I mean, it's fun, it's fun. to ride. Yeah. But I think it's like a pleasant atmosphere. As you walk by it, I like seeing them spin and, and, and sink and stuff. Yeah. I love it. I like especially, because you know there's like that one moment at the end that's always the same where they yeah. like, they do the rock and then they like, woo! I love like, I would say 85% of the time when you see other people do it, mm -hmm. you hear a big, woo! <laughs> that's the moment. It's like, wow, people are really enjoying themselves. People and love it. That's great. So that's what's going on over at Disney California Adventure. It's a lot of the returning stuff. Um, it's fun. I I wish yeah. there was something new. Uh, like a Guardians Gar overlay? Listen, we got a Guardians Halloween overlay. Yeah, and lucky. they should have a Christmas one. <laughs> what if like literally every holiday, they're like St. Patrick's Guardians I of the Galaxy. Valentine's. But Guardians. if they're celebrating in the park. Let's have a let's have and, a, oh if there's a full on like a full on like season I got you maybe next year um, yeah because think remember about it. it's still been less than a year for Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout one one overlay is a pretty big deal yeah. but picture Groot and a little, and a little Santa hat. hat oh my god baby Groot <laughs> okay you make that plush. And I am buying it. I would not be surprised if we see that plush this year. You anyways. make that <laughs> Christmas tree ornament. I'm yeah. buying it. Like yeah. that's that's too cute. That that's a win right there. Good job. Good work there. Uh, now let's head over to Disneyland. <laughs> and, oh, that was a quick. He just walked over there, folks. Oh wow. Um, Esplanade's a lot shorter than I remember yeah. it being. So uh, what's going on there? We got our overlays, of course. Oh, all the overlays. You know, uh, Haunted Mansion Holiday is still there. Are you done with it? No, but, no, no. Okay. I've well, I haven't. Re I, I've only ridden it uh, maybe like five or six times this year. So okay, actually, that's yeah. more than me. You know what? I, I always like three or four. I always I'm like really excited for it until maybe like the last two weeks, and then I'm like, all right, I'm ready. But I will say it takes me a lot less time to get like uh to pine for ha haunted mansion holiday than it does for regular oh haunted okay mansion. i gotcha like two months after it's gone i'm like when's haunted mansion holiday come back yeah i uh it's interesting to me because it's 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 just been there so long at this point mm. that um I don't know. I don't consider it a Christmas layover. I know it is, but right. to me, I'm like, no, there's a Halloween layover that's like that can continue into Christmas. So it doesn't really count. Yeah, I mean, but it it does. I know that it does. Um, so that's still going on. Small it's, world. It's a small world holiday, which 
I love Me Small too. World Holiday. And this year, we've got Fast Pass available for it. Was that not there last year? No. Are you sure? That was added because of Max Pass. Oh. So it's it's available because of Max Pass, and then they put in the kiosks. Basically, if you want a Fast Pass for uh, or paper Fast Pass for um, for it's a Small World Holiday, you got to go over by the Matterhorn. It shares those kiosks. I've used it. It's the best way to do it because those li- those lines get long. Uh, well, I went last time I was there. I had a five minute wait. Okay. For standby. Oh, wow. Um, which I feel like I lucked out. Yes. Yeah. I've seen long lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when it's not. When there's an overlay, I've seen long lines for Small World. Small World's weird. Every once in a while, it's just like everybody wants to to ride it. So, well, it's uh, like what 10, 15 minutes, and it's fully air conditioned. So it's true. On a um, hot day. But when you've waited in that hot, <laughs> sunny line for two hours, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Do you think they'll leave the fast pass? Um, I think there's potential. I I don't know if it wasn't taking over the Matterhorn kiosks, I'd say maybe. Oh, you're right. But it's taking up like two or three of those kiosks. Here's a, just to get off topic for a second. Yeah. Do you think? And I know how you feel about Max Pass. So, mm-hmm. do you think in the next two years or in the lead up to Star Wars Land that we'll see some Max Pass only attractions? Lines? It wouldn't surprise me. I'm right. honest. I kind of feel like if they were gonna do it, they would have done it with like Small World Holiday. Right. Um. I think eventually. I mean, I think paper fast passes are eventually gonna have to go away, right? But they keep investing in it, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh. It's an interesting. Well, I think situation because the last thing that they invested in was the they added in Matterhorn, the Matterhorn, right? And uh, Toy, Toy Story, Story Midway that's Mania. Right. That's right. So like that's some major. Could, like that's not an easy, uh, cheap thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Just, just. Never. I feel like if they were gonna do that, it would have been, hey, we're adding Max Pass to these, but not Fast Pass. But everything else, you can still get your normal Fast Passes. I right. feel like if that's the direction they were gonna go in, they would have done that. Maybe they wanted to add a couple more Fast Pass before they did just that. to appease. People. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, like we gave you some more Fast Pass. My guess is if. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has paper fast passes. I would not be surprised if the kiosks are outside of the land. Oh, So yeah. that it, like, doesn't interrupt the flow. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Or if they're, like, really, really hidden. Yeah. Or maybe they're, like, droids that roll around. That's what I You think, have yeah. to find a droid <laughs> rolling around I would to get your fast that. pass. I wouldn't even... I have max pass, so I wouldn't even need it, but I would still You'd go still find droids. You'd still stop the droids? Nice. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on at Disneyland? Uh... The Believe in Mo- Holiday Magic fireworks, yeah, which are nice. Yeah, They're really um, good. I would, I'd like it. It's really hard because you know these are some shows, these holiday shows, the ones that were created a while ago. I'd say probably at least a decade ago. Yeah, and since then we've had such epic shows like Disneyland Forever and um, you know the the plus uh, Remember Dreams Come True and such. So it's kind of hard to bring back something old, even if it's seasonal. Yeah. Just because like it just doesn't live up to what we've been given recently, or, or at but least plus it, right? Yeah. yeah. That, I wish they they're not really doing Main Street projections for it, are they? Mm-mm. No, they should. I wish they'd add that. That'd be yeah. nice. But um, one of your favorites has returned. Uh, is that the parade? The Christmas, the Christmas fantasy, fantasy yeah. parade. A Christmas fantasy. Uh, I, you know what? I like this parade more than I da, say. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. da, 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 da. You can literally sing the whole thing. Now we're running into copyright. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> um. Well, the. You know, I don't. I I give this parade crap, but I don't hate it. Yeah. There every time I watch it, and I usually do watch it at least once a year. I've I've walked past it several times this year, and I'll be walking past like, oh god, Christmas fantasy, and like, oh, I love the, <laughs> the snowman. snowman. Oh, oh they're so cute. look at the gingerbread man. The, yeah. Here's here's what it is: the toy soldiers. My favorite. Yeah, pretty great. I love the Toy Soldiers. And I always get bummed. So the Toy Soldiers are actually playing these trumpets. They're not trumpets, though. What are they? Corn horn? Cornets? Whatever they're. They're like the long trumpets without the valves. They're playing those. And, you know, they play them in- intermittently. So I always get really bummed if it's like they don't play them near me. I'm like, <laughs> come on, come on. 
put them up, start playing. So wow. I always pray that that they start playing near me. <laughs> so I love the toy soldiers. I love the little snowmen. And yeah. I think those are the two biggies for me. I like the gingerbread men. The gingerbread men. You know what I've been, those are cute too. Oh, and I saw Claire Bell was added. Oh, to which floor? She- no, she's she's dancing around with the oh. gingerbread men. She's part of. The- I feel like I've seen pictures of that of yeah. her like in an apron and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's cooking those. I love how the backs. She's of the- cooking them. Yeah, oh. I love how the backs of the gingerbread men are flat. Yeah, like they're on a pan. Well, they're gingerbread. Men. Yeah, I think that it's a super cute yeah. detail. Um. Oh, I was gonna say something about the gingerbread. No, no, I know what I was gonna say. I have been noticing lately. Uh, to the women who are friends of Belle in the park, you are some of the best actresses I've ever seen in my life because the way they look into the eyes of Beast, <laughs> unbelievable. I swear to God, I have seen some Instagram photos recently, not only from uh, Christmas Fantasy, but even um, the, goodness, Magic Kingdom Parade, uh, Festival of Fantasy. Oh, yeah. Even in that one, like, I have just been seeing so many photos recently where I'm like, oh, that girl's in love. And I'm like, <laughs> it's a giant beast head. And she's not really. Yeah. Good acting, though. I appreciate it. <laughs> but speaking of the Christmas fantasy parade, uh, anything else you want to add about that? It's a Christmas fantasy. The thing that would just plus that a million times for me is if they would loop the music instead of pause, start over. That's the thing that drives me more uh. crazy than anything. Could you probably hear it, I don't know, eight times? Within oh, the course of the brain, at least eight times, that, yeah. you'll hear it get to the end of the song, pause for a few seconds, and then restart. Yeah. That drives me crazy. But um, I have a little game I want to play with you. Since A Christmas Fantasy is aging, yeah. let's just armchair Imagineer for a sec. Let's pretend that we could do whatever we want for a new Christmas parade, get rid of A Christmas Fantasy entirely. Yeah. What are you going to do? That is the question. Um, I would do, um, I think they could do something really cool with the Toy Story characters. Oh, yeah. I feel like. Now, they do uh, have a section of that. I know they have a section and they're kind of like, they're kind of further back in the parade Mm -hmm. and they're kind of, they're, they're grouped together with the toys. Yeah. Like the toy manufacturing float. Well, is that still Geppetto who like heads that? I don't. It used to be Geppetto. I think it was Jiminy Cricket for a while, and now I feel like Toy Story has kind of taken over that section. I think Toy Story is because it starts out with the Jeep, uh, oh, with with Jesse. Jesse, and I believe that Jeep used to have Chip and Dale. It did. Yeah. So yeah. like they make changes to the parade. We say it's the same parade. Yeah. By same parade, we mean same music and same floats right. every year. They do make character changes from year well, to they, year. They 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 added the Frozen floats. Yeah, and, that was a couple of years ago. Um. But I think that they should because uh, <laughs> added Frozen, but took away Minnie and Minnie, Minnie and Mickey ice skating. That used to be their float. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, that float used to be the Mickey and Minnie ice skating float. Whoa! And they completely changed it for Frozen. Let's get that one back. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, it was cute. Um, anyways, so in the first Toy Story movie, mm-hmm. at the very end, there, uh, they're like, there's a mission, right, to find out what the unopened toys are. Okay. You don't remember this? The what in toys? The unopened toys. Oh, unopened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they have like a whole system with with the army men. Okay. Uh, so I think that it should start out with the Toy Story characters, and they're like starting this mission of like, what is Santa going to bring okay. this year? And so uh, throughout the whole thing, you could have floats that are like unopened presents, and they like reveal like a, you know, they could stop. I like this. And uh, like the present could unwrap and there could be like a little mini scene. Cause, cause in the current parade, you know, like the floats stop and they kind of like put on, like some of the performers put on a little show or there's a, a little dance number or something. Yeah. So the, the box could open and it could reveal like, you know, any Disney property like Lion King. And it's oh, so like, we're not keeping in the Toy Story. Well, so yeah. like inside the boxes <laughs> okay. are like, it's like you got, like, like you got your Lion King toys for okay. Christmas. You uh, know, it just become a whole marketing pitch, though. Yeah. Like, it would literally be all of the newest toys. Yeah, would would you know? Well, but it wouldn't be. They wouldn't be toys, or it would be kind of like a, like it would be the costumed characters, uh, but they would be. I don't know, like decorated, like they were, like they would have a bow or a ribbon on them or something. Yeah. It was like you got that, you got that 
<laughs> you got that Disney property for Christmas. Okay. Uh, and then intermittently, you would have the army men, and they'd be, like, calling out. Maybe they, like, come out in front of the present, and they kind of, like, set it up like they're, like, okay, he's getting ready to open the this big present, like, big long present, and then, like, it opens up, and it's, like, uh, it's, like, Ka from uh, oh, okay. Jungle Book, and there's, like, a little, like, Jungle Book scene that happens around him, and then it, like, gets wrapped back up. So the, the so the toy soldiers are the 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 through line yeah. of the parade, and then the rest of it is kind of any Disney property you want. I think so, and that but you could also include like some fun moments, like maybe later on in the parade, like there's a Zerg, Ooh. and so it like turns and like Buzz has to like like come back out, and, like. Or like, but or not come back out, but like maybe like Buzz has to come in and like do some battle with him or something. Can I plus this? Yeah, sure. Okay. Every time the giant box opens and is being unwrapped, I want some long confetti streamers that go off as if it's the wrapping paper being ripped open. Oh, that's good. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. For Zerg, I feel like we should blow up the box. So I feel like there needs to be an explosion for his reveal. Um. Can one of them please have Wayne Zielinski inside? <laughs> Can we do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he said yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, then I am all for this parade. Had they done this, could it be snow globes? <laughs> they did snow Didn't globes in a snow parade globes? at Walt Disney World. Okay, that's what I thought. For goodness, it might have been the 50th anniversary. Yeah. Okay. That parade lasted a very long time. Yes, they've done it. It wasn't a snow globe in the sense of like Christmas snow. It was more like glitter, glitter globe. Right. But they had the characters inside the globes, and eventually yeah. they got rid of the stuff that was flying around. Okay. I think. I could also think of like you could do like some, uh, like variations of that where the where the scene is contained in something like that. Like maybe it's a, a clockwork, uh, scene or something. It's like Pinocchio characters, but it's like a it's like a clockwork, uh motion or something like just something like uh so that all of them have the appearance of toys but you can kind of still have all these different properties i was thinking about like all toy story uh but then i was like well it's about to be pixar the pixar celebration so Uh, i don't want to like inundate people with pixar because this is totally gonna happen yeah right right. (laughs) i love that i love the thought you've put into it that's good I have an idea, unless there's something else you want to add. Um, no, that's no. good. But you like my streamers idea? I like that. Yes, I yeah. do like that. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm amazed at how much kids want. Where was I recently where there was a bunch of confetti? Oh, I was, I was, I was at Knott's Merry Farm and for Snoopy or something, confetti went off. And I remember being this way as a kid, but it still amazes me. They're like, oh, there's confetti. I got to go get some. And like, <laughs> you will trample across people to grab confetti. Scraps of paper. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saved some, I remember, for a long time. Tangent. Um, here we go. <laughs> At Universal Studios Hollywood, they used to have a really, really wonderful, like, and I say this with all the sincerity in the world, Flintstone stage musical. Oh. Back in, like, 93, 94, 95, when the, when the live action movie first came out. And the space that is currently, well, actually, recently, it's now shut down, Shrek 4D. Ah. Oh. Um, it was a live stage musical of the Flintstones. And they had confetti, and it was so good. And like they had a pterodactyl airplane that flew over the audience with the actors in it. It was like what the? It was some of the best stage work live show that Universal's ever done. It was like up there, I would say, with Finding Nemo the musical. Wow! And the music was good. If you can find it on YouTube, I'm sure the picture quality isn't great because it's the early '90s. It's worth checking out. Wow. Flintstones musical at Universal Studios Hollywood. In any case, right. they had that confetti. I collected it. I kept it for a long time. Like I put you it. You mean you got rid of it? Yeah, I did. Oh. But it, I kept it in the photo album with like the photos from the show and stuff. Totally had it for a long time. So uh, I loved confetti as much as any other kid. It still just makes me laugh, though. But in any case. What's your parade? Are you ready for my parade idea? I don't, I don't think I am ready. No, but. I think this is genius. And like, I 100% think that they should do this. Okay. They won't. Because it they've struggled lately. I think for a Christmas parade, the Muppets are the perfect, perfect characters to present a, a Christmas parade. Because, I don't know about you, I love the Muppets, that's no secret. Oh, yeah. But I think the Muppets' best work always comes with their Christmas specials. I think the Muppets' Christmas work is so good. No? Not no, for you? What's your favorite Muppet stuff? Uh, I mean, 
favorite Muppet thing of all time is the Muppet movie. Okay, the original yeah. Muppet movie. For me, I love the Christmas stuff. So I'm just thinking if you had like a whole section, I think toward the end maybe, a whole Muppet Christmas Carol section. And that's the other thing. They, they All of their Christmas specials have so much great new holiday music mm. if you could end the parade with that classic it feels like christmas that the ghost of christmas present sings in muppet christmas carol i think that would be lovely they did add it to the end of mickey's most merriest celebration oh did they um, really well i shouldn't say added it. it's been there since last year oh. when the show opened it's like i think it's the finale of that show so like it's a great wonderful christmas song that frankly should be a standard at this point like it's so good i think i know why you want this to be a parade why because you want an emmett otter float okay here's the thing here's the thing as you may or may not know first of all disney doesn't own emmett otter sadly right. disney is it's not a core muppets thing but my favorite work that the jim henson company's ever done and my favorite christmas special of all time is emmett otter's jug band's christmas if you're not familiar with it do yourself a favor and check it out it's so good but I did write in my notes. <laughs> I wrote sneak sneak in Emmett Otter music <laughs> wow. because because I mean obviously it would fit. It's still a Jim Henson thing, even though D Disney doesn't own Jim Henson. But as far as music and parades, Disney always puts music and parades that they don't own. I remember uh, you can't stop the beat from the musical Hairspray being in a Disney hmm. parade. There's a lot of times where they'll use music that isn't Disney property. So I was like, if they could somehow sneak in a song from Emmett Otter into one of the Muppets sections. That'd be fantastic. Wait, isn't the whole thing a Muppet section? Yeah, I mean, what a, I'm breaking it up into sections. Oh, so gotcha. there's a Muppet Christmas Carol section. Okay. We've also got, um, let's see. Oh, there's Muppet Family Christmas. Are you familiar with this? Uh, maybe. Muppet Family Christmas is basically, there's actually a lot of non- Is this Wonderful Life? It's a wonderful No, life. no, that's no? It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas okay, movie. Okay. Muppet Family Christmas, I want to say it was the 80s, okay. and it was a collection of everything Jim Henson. So obviously they couldn't use all these characters, but a lot of the music in this and stuff they could use, it's beautiful because it's like Sesame Street, Fraggles, uh, nice. The Muppets. It's it's a lot of different Jim Henson properties in, in one uh, Christmas special. It's so good. So if they had a Muppet Family Christmas-like section, then there was... Um, uh, Muppet, Muppet Christmas Letters to Santa, which was a TV special. Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie, which is the one like It's a Wonderful Life. Um, of course, the Muppet Christmas album is like one of the best Christmas albums out there with I've John Denver. This, no. What? Yeah. You're not familiar with the John De Denver Christmas album? No. Oh my goodness. This wow. is this is like a staple for me. Uh, you need you need to to listen. It's really really good. So in any case, my whole thought is there's just a lot of Muppet Christmas properties that you could- Interesting. You don't like it? Well, no, 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 just when you said Muppets, I, what came to my mind is more of like, um, like the Muppet show, like the Muppets are putting on the Christmas parade, and like there's like an elect Dr. Teeth and Electric Man float. There's like I think a it great could Gonzo work. float, and like I think you could work some <clears throat> of that in there, but I think it would be a shame to do that and not recognize at least uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, right? Which to me, like that whole Charles Dickens, like that's Christmas to me. Like right. that, those are the good, warm feelings of Christmas for me. And so, like to not have that finale with "It Feels Like Christmas," I think would be a real shame. Yeah. Um. I mean, frankly, you could do just a Muppet Christmas. I was Carol gonna say me. if you, you, I feel like do that. You would have to keep that consistency of like. Going through, I mean, would somebody... you? I mean, does Christmas fantasy? <laughs> does any? Well, Disney but parade? I mean, that's not like a. The, the the thing for me is that in a uh, in a Disney parade, you never see. Um, you never see the same characters keep popping up. You're right. So to tell you could, you could tell a story like Muppet Christmas Carol because it's um because it's these different vignettes listen i'll take that too no that would be cool i would i would, but uh, there is like john denver christmas out muppet christmas album is really good I, I would miss that um it's it's just it's so good. muppet family christmas is phenomenal i've i've given you guys a good list of christmas I, specials I was just gonna and music. Say. if you haven't seen any of these like seriously uh the top ones for me would be absolutely muppet christmas carol absolutely a Muppet Family Christmas and definitely listen to the John Denver Muppets Christmas album. Like, they're so good. In fact, the Muppets came up with a Christmas album, I think it was called The Very... A red and green Christmas or something like that. Oh, that sounds really uh, familiar. Just a year yeah. or two ago. So the Muppets even came out with a recent Christmas mm -hmm. album. Um, 
I think this is perfect. I know the Muppets aren't big enough. Do you remember when the Muppets were on parade though at Disneyland? They did a pre-parade float no. during. Ooh, it was I think the year of a million dreams. It might have been before your time here, but they was actually it when the Muppets came out, the Muppet it, movie. I think it was soon after like the Disney bought them, the okay. Falon bought them. Um, I'm not sure. So in any case, I really would like to see that happen. Um, I don't think either of our dears will happen. I think yours is, would be more likely to happen. But how about for next Christmas, a new parade? Yeah. I, mean, I would I would really. Yeah. Honestly, if that was the only thing that changed, and like we said, this is a lot of repeat stuff. Um, this is not a ton of new stuff going on. So I feel like we need something new. Yeah. And a parade uh, would do it for me. You saying that reminds me. That they didn't oh. bring back one of the best parts of the Disney holiday. Yeah, I didn't realize you loved it so much, but go ahead. I mean, Jingle Cruise isn't uh, isn't like the most amazing overlay. It's nice, though. But it's a lot of fun, and it seems like a waste that they didn't uh, that they didn't put 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 on the overlay. I, I would agree. I, I don't know. I'm going to assume budget. They just didn't want to shut down the ride and pay somebody to decorate it. I, I guess. It yeah. was all in place. The, it is happening at Walt Disney World, as we mentioned last week, but it's not returning to Disneyland for some reason. Maybe they just feel like we had enough overlays. The sad thing is, is we had the better version. I did. Yeah, I know. Last year, I got to do both versions, and ours is better. So... Um, well, uh, and they kept up. They kept plusing they kept it. Plusing they kept it. like adding cool stuff. I don't know. I'm sure they must have taken a survey, and it didn't change people's opinions about coming to the park. Uh, you know, people yeah. weren't coming for that. It was just a nice little overlay. It is a bummer that it's gone. But actually, something I forgot to talk about last week that has gone from Walt Disney World for Christmas that is a much bigger deal, in my opinion. Yeah. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Uh, the great movie ride. No, <laughs> although that is sad. No, this is Christmas related. Uh, the drone show at Disney oh. Springs. Well, is, that was really kind of like a tester, right? From what I understand, it was a test for the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. If you don't remember, during the Super Bowl last year, Lady Gaga used those drones to basically spell out Pepsi in the sky. Uh, and <laughs> seriously, it was you a sound pe- so like wow. It was a Pepsi ad. Yeah. Um, it was I I. From what I understand, the Disney drone show was a test simply for that. Well, to be fair, it was, um, is it HP? It's Intel. Yeah. It was never like a Disney show. It was Intel. So I think, because I've seen, I've seen Intel do, they did something for uh, Wonder Woman 2. Okay. So I think they kind of just like, um, they just go to companies and are like, hey, like, we want to, like, put together a drone show for you. So I don't think it was ever, none of the stuff they do is ever, like, permanent installation. Because I feel like the upkeep on drones, like, to keep bringing them back every year mm-hmm. would just be, like, Disney would essentially have to buy. I would like to see it. I would have liked to have seen it return, frankly. Like, it's a bummer not to have it back, I yeah. think. But in any case, it's a Christmas tree. No Christmas drone show and no Jingle Cruise for Disneyland. No. That's how it works. Uh, what else is going on at Disneyland? I think nothing. we covered everything. <laughs> nothing going on. Haunted Mansion, no Jingle That's Cruise, it. small New World Star Hunt. Tours, which New is Star not Tours. Christmas related. No, but next time you ride, maybe there'll be a Santa hat on C-3PO. No. That'd be weird. Um, <laughs> it's the holiday special. It'd be a life day hat. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, I do want to mention before we leave the holiday stuff, any favorite holiday foods? In either of the parks. Because I got one. Oh, you do? Oh, my goodness. You go first. The turkey pot pie soup over at the Pacific Wharf oh, Cafe yeah, that is, is really to good. die for. Yeah. Um, it's the best. It's what you. it sounds like. It's the insides of a turkey pot pie in a bread bowl. Mm. It's the best. That's mm. all I'll say about it. So that's, I, that's what I got. I had a really good turkey pot pie for Thanksgiving. You had turkey pot pie for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Instead of just turkey? Yeah, turkey sucks. Oh my goodness. Yeah, turkey's terrible. I disagree wholeheartedly. Yeah. But um Turkey's awful. Um, what's wrong with you? What? Turkey's just like Let us know in the comments below if you think turkey is a terrible holiday food. Oh, I love it. No, yeah. I love it. I, and you are feel free to like annotate that with like, oh, I do deep fried turkey because regular like baked turkey. Oh, I love it. Lame. Oh, I love it. Lame. Although I found a really great recipe for for turkey leftovers. Here we go. Tangent. Again, uh, you take a crescent roll. Yeah. Put the leftover turkey 
a scoop of mashed potatoes, a scoop of stuffing, and a little bit of cranberry sauce. Roll up the crescent roll in the oven 375 for 15 minutes. Boom. Mm. Perfection. If you like the holiday turkey sandwich at Earl of Sandwich at Downtown Disney or Disney Springs, try this because it's amazing. Did you do it this year? Not yet, but I'm oh. going to. I actually oh. literally made a turkey. on. Th so I go to a friend's house for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Made a turkey that morning just to freeze the turkey so that, uh, you know, later on I can make those crescent rolls. You know, turkey's not like a Thanksgiving only thing. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. No. No. So, but I, you know, Thanksgiving morning I like to have a cook, uh, turkey cooking so it smells like turkey in my house. Okay. That's my thing. All right. Anywho, uh, that's a, some weird tangents. What else is going on? I oh, don't want to know what my food thing Oh, yeah. What's your food thing? Wow. Sorry. Rude. Well, you wanted the whole turkey hate oh. stuff that just offended <laughs> me. Um... Hot bourbon cider. All right. At Disney California Is Adventure. Is that part of the festival? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And they have, this year, they've got bourbon-infused marshmallows. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Kids, <laughs> ask I your mean, parents to grab you one. <laughs> no, I don't think that's how no, that don't do work. that. <laughs> I mean, I won't be having it, but I'm glad you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, it's very good. They Excellent. have a lot of good, like, holiday cocktails. They have, like, an eggnog uh like an eggnog milkshake here's a tip if you want to take it to disneyland get the alcoholic eggnog put it in a to-go cup don't get it in the like open cup because then you can't leave the park with it well yeah i'm if surprised you, they don't check, if you like, get a put if, if you, you put it in a to-go cup. cup with the lid and a straw you're oh, good to go wow just enough way i, I haven't wow. done this but i know somebody that's yeah I, I, okay. I, you know I met up with somebody who was very excited that right. he got away with it so okay just saying um so also if you want to do a special tour at disneyland during holiday time they have the holiday time at the disneyland resort tour it's 85 bucks it includes both parks two and a half hours and quote share your favorite disneyland holiday traditions from around the world um you get reserved seating for christmas fantasy parade treats and a collectible pin so i haven't done this i would like to some year yeah um nah, i don't know i don't feel that i like those tours i think that they're great they're they're a bit pricey but they're really good uh but if you can't make it to the parks for the holidays guess what you don't have to they're coming to your living room what yeah we can tell us more jeff <laughs> two tv <laughs> holiday specials on abc tomorrow night if you're listening to this on the day it comes out tomorrow thursday night uh the wonderful world of disney magical holiday celebration what is what is tomorrow night tomorrow's the 30th or 31st whatever the last day of november is i don't know it's that day that day um <laughs> So yeah, check that out. I love I love this new trend that they have of like uh, making more than one Christmas special a year. Yeah, and then as, just like as long as they don't use the same footage, they, they did totally that last year. they did last year. Yeah, well, you know, what? I don't think they're going to. This I year. think they will because you know why? Why? Because they have the two same hosts for both. They do, the but I've been reading up on like what people are performing on each and like they're performing different songs. Oh. Last year, they, they may not have announced everything, so there may be some copycats. I bet you anything jolly to the core is going in both, in both? of those specials. Nah, I feel like, it, uh, I hope not. Yeah. I don't know. So so um, the the Wonderful World of Disney one is, is tomorrow night. And then there's the Disney Parks Magical Christmas Celebration on Christmas morning on ABC. Both of these are on ABC with hosts Julian Huff. And Nick Lachey from uh, 98 Degrees. Just him yeah. from 98 Degrees. Well, yeah, but 98 Degrees is going to be He's, on. They're going to be performing. The whole thing. Did have, you see him on, at the, the, the parade? Thanksgiving parade? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, have a new Christmas album. They look rough. Do they? Oh. I mean, they're, you know, they're grown men now. They're not boys anymore. I know, which is why it's kind of weird that they're like. Uh, listen, Backstreet Boys are the... still in Vegas, man. They, boy bands are the best. Don't you say anything. Best Christmas album? One of the best Christmas albums. <laughs> In Sync. Seriously? Wow. In Sync is one of the best Christmas albums of all time. Okay. Just putting that out there. Uh, I think it's called Home for the Holidays. In Sync. Check it out. Uh, let's see. Co host Jesse Palmer. Who's that? Is that a uh, sports person? Jesse Palmer. Sounds like a football player to me. I have no But idea. I have no idea. Um, performer Sierra, <laughs> Darius Rucker, Fifth Harmony. Darius Fit Rucker? Yeah. Oh, my God. Fits and Tantrums, Hanson, In Real Life, the boy band that won the TV show Boy Band on ABC. Wait, Hanson's going to be there in real life? No, Hanson will be there and the <laughs> band in real life. 
the, that's the name of a it's, band it's the worst do they just like ever. the like uh they, they i don't know what they were thinking with this name know. in real life i do not like uh, that name but i love the group they're great okay. met the guys once they were very pleasant met wow. them at knots uh not knots at uh queen mary dark harbor oh, okay they're just walking around and like grown men's like hey in real life photo and took a photo they're, wow. they're cool. i watched every week wow. yeah seriously i watched every week of boy band on abc Wait, i voted that's that's who it was yeah oh. yeah yeah they do that show boy band on abc gotcha. these are the five winners four of which i voted for and um <laughs> Yeah. Did you say something to the fifth guy where you're like, I actually I didn't vote for you? I lied to them and I said, I voted for all of you. Wow. I voted 2,000 times. Yeah. I literally voted 2,000 times. Yeah. I was only supposed to vote 1,000 times, but I went to a different computer and voted another 1,000. I was really. Guess what? If, if anyone's watching this from ABC, they're revoking. <laughs> they're revoking. <laughs> recount. I asked for a recount on know. Boy Band. I don't think they're going to be around much longer. So <laughs> but uh, you, they're on a Disney holiday special. That solidifies them oh, yeah. as pop icons. Okay. And uh, J- Jason Derulo, Leah Michelle, 98 Degrees, Broadway's Aladdin, Telly Lu- Luang, and Ariel Jacobs. Cool. They're going to be singing a whole wor- new world over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Oh, nice. So it sounds like it's going to be a pretty great celebration um i'm looking forward to it and like you, i hope there's no copycat performances from one to the eh. next we'll see uh although i don't know how they're gonna be that finale last year with mariah carey singing all i want for christmas in front of small world small world that was great that was awesome it was really good so anyway i think that's it for the holidays of the disneyland resort <laughs> um we got to talk about a little movie though that came out i don't want to talk about it we got to talk about coco no Came out this past Thanksgiving weekend, of course, dominated the box office. Number one movie of all time in Mexico. Aaron, you're blocking your ears because you still have not seen it. Shame on you. Yeah, I know. I can't believe you haven't seen it. You're really not excited about it, are you? Now I am. Okay, because because yeah. Jeff DePauli said it's amazing. <laughs> um, here's the deal. I'm going to, well, let's go through a few things before we go to the movie. Um, because Coco's all over the place. They had a Coco VR experience, which I didn't, did you know? Disney's got a whole VR. I didn't realize this. DisneyMoviesVR.com. Yeah. I think that was the bigger takeaway for me. It was like, wow, Disney's got a bunch of VR things going on. Yeah, it's, so check that out. Um, it's available on Oculus Rift and Samsung Gear VR. They call it social VR. You're supposed to play it with other people. Just the, the whole... Coco. Just yeah, the Coco, the Coco one. Yeah. So they're trying. They're definitely like playing in the whole VR world. It's not my favorite thing on in the world, but I, I maybe younger people are really into it. You can explore the worlds of Co- of uh, Coco, and this is Pixar's first VR experience. So if you're interested and you have access to VR, go to DisneyMoviesVR.com. Check that out. Also, they're wrapped in Southwest Airplane in Coco. Um, wow. I always find that interesting when companies do that, just because I'm like, oh, this could be bad press if something goes wrong. I just find it scary to put like Tinkerbell and stuff on an airplane. I mean, to be fair. I know. I know the chances are very unlikely. This is, the, this is a movie about Dia de los Muertos. Oh my so. goodness. That's terrible. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. It's all good, guys. It could, they could it, really turn that one around. Your chances <laughs> if, uh, It's good marketing. No, that's terrible. I can't even believe you said that. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. But they did wrap a Southwest plane uh, in Coco. Also, at the Mexico Pavilion. In Coco? Yeah, in Coco. It's, yes. It's very tasty. <laughs> Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. There's a Coco inspired mariachi band now uh, playing songs like Remember Me. For which, oh my God, so good. So good. <laughs> Through January 6th, they're calling themselves El Mariachi Coco de Santa Cecilia, which is the name of the town from the film. Oh, spoilers, Jeff. What, Santa Cecilia? Yeah. Get over it. Wow. Uh, and then the Donald Duck, they're basically performing where the Donald Duck meet and greet used to oh. happen. And so he got bumped indoors for a while. What? And of course, don't forget the sneak peek that's happening over at Disney California Adventure and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a chunk of movie. Just Is say. it really? Yeah. And in I fact, I felt like there was a spoiler in that, which I'm going to quote unquote spoil right now because obviously it's not if they're giving it away there. But we find out how Ernesto de la Cruz dies in this. And a giant bell falls on top of him during a performance on stage. And I was like, whoa! I couldn't believe that they just gave that away in the sneak peek. But they did. Anyway, I'm going to start talking about the movie. Are you going to be okay? No. Here's the deal, guys. I am. I saw the movie. I loved the movie. Uh, so let's. I'm going to get into a spoiler-free 
Disney movie review. It better be spoiler free. And you can be my spoiler free alarm. If I start getting dangerously close to something spoiler free. What do you mean? Like, it's gonna, I'm gonna hear it. You're not gonna hear it. You're gonna be like, why? No, I'll I'll, I'll tread lightly. Okay. Is that cool? Here we go, guys. Walt Disney Studios presents action, romance, fantasy, and comedy. Now, here are thoughts on the latest presentation from Walt Disney Studios in the Disney Movie Review. So I did get to see Coco over at the Walt Disney Studios lot, which was great. Which, by the way, if you have you ever seen a movie in the theater there? No. They have a light show before the movie, which I think is you know like how if you go Do to the they always have a light show. Yeah, before oh. the movie, like I, I actually forgot about it. I'd normally, I'll see it um, in one of their smaller screening rooms, but in like their main lot, they close the curtain and it, it's not as ex- as extravagant. Wait, as, did you see it on the lot? I saw it on the lot lot. Oh, normally yeah. I go to the animation building, um, but the on the lot lot they close the curtains and the lights start doing their thing with like choreographed music and stuff, and I find that funny. Oh my gosh, sorry. Total tangent. Yeah. El Capitan. Yeah, I knew you were going there. Is that new? No. They've been doing that for years. With, with like the light show at the beginning and the projection and the yeah. and the Hollywood sign. I've it. never seen Done that. Done it forever. I've never seen that. That's weird. Because it's always like something else. No, they usually do that before the movie. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's a great light show before the movie at the El Cap. Wow. Um so in any case, they do like a mini version of that on the Walt Disney okay. Studios lot. Uh, very interesting to me was the they had two separate lines, 2D and 3D. Ah. I opted in for 3D. I am indifferent toward 3D. I don't think it's worth extra money. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, it makes the picture darker. That doesn't bother me so much when it comes to animation. When it comes to live action, 3D tends to be really dark for me. But animation, I don't know. It seems to be vibrant enough. And so I opted for 3D, but I was very surprised to see how many people opted in for 2D. Hmm. And this 2D thing is, I mean, this 3D thing is not catching on, like, is what it seems like. Because IMAX dropped 3D from what I understand. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Um, I don't so, think so. Yeah. There's quite a few, like, for next year, because there's a few movies in theaters right now that are IMAX 3D. I'm hearing IMAX is getting rid of, rid of the 3D thing because they've found that it actually dissuades people oh. from going. It went, at least they're giving the option, yeah. maybe, uh, because people are, are want 2D. And I, just, I feel like so many times in history, we've tried to make 3D a thing. Not so many, like maybe twice. Uh, actually, in all of cinematics. maybe three times. Nah, I, don't know. Nah. I feel like the, it was back in like the, you know, House of Wax, 3D didn't catch on. And then in like the 80s, there was Jaws 3D and Friday wow. the 13th 3D didn't catch on. And now we're in this, as much as Jeff Katzenberg wants it to happen, it ain't happening. So I just find it interesting, the whole 2D versus 3D Why thing. Why do you say Jeff Katzenberg? He was a hardcore 3D guy. I feel like Jim Cameron was also like... James Cameron, yeah, that as well. He's, like, um, he's trying to make the next like... It's just not going to catch on. It's like they want it to be like the talkies, where it's like, oh, the talkies, everybody needs wow. to see it. Or, or, oh or a color God. film. Oh, everybody yeah. wants to see a color movie. Not everybody wants to see a 3D movie. It's all right. Keep it to the theme parks is how I feel. Because like more than 10 minutes of it seems to give people headaches. Nah, I don't mind it. And I don't mind it at all either. Or yeah. some people just don't like wearing the glasses. I yeah. wear glasses all the time, so it doesn't bother me um but shall we start with olaf's frozen adventure sure i don't know why people are so adamantly against this it was fine yeah <laughs> like people are really angry about olaf's frozen adventure why i don't know oh. i mean it's clearly listen it was clearly made for tv you can tell by the aspect oh, ratio yeah, yeah. like oh, it was, really oh yeah it's not full on oh, widescreen wow it's like the aspect why but it's in 3d because when they announced it they said it was gonna be a tv it was special. gonna be a tv special yeah. so I they made it they... and they basically were like oh we're not gonna put it on tv we're gonna put it before coco we're not changing the aspect ratio we'll make it 3d uh, and I think the biggest takeaway from this is Anna and Elsa have new dresses, and that's really what it comes down to. They can sell more dresses. Oh yeah. But um, I thought it was fu- like I thought it was enjoyable. No. Yes, I did. Yeah, I thought, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I thought it was fine. I'm sure, it's great. Um, I'll, you know what's funny though is I heard uh, Josh Gad saying that it gets harder and harder for him to do the voice. So I'm wondering how is he? I'll do it. How is he gonna do? I'll do it. A whole nother movie of that voice. Why is it getting harder? 
harder. It's not like he's it's like hard on it. Like it, it, it's hard for him to hit those notes still. But he's still. It's not like he was like young and then aged. I mean, he's still the same. It was people's, three years ago. People's what? Three years ago. When was Frozen? Four four years ago. Yeah, like twenty third. Okay. Yeah, but he was he recorded it probably like six years ago. So I don't know. I don't know. I find that weird. That's what he said. Hey, start working out your voice there, Josh Gad. It's called professional voice. He's getting into he's getting into serious roles. Okay. Good for him. As I heard, uh, Orient Express did really well. Um, I digress. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Did you see it? I've heard. N- then I really. Here's the thing. Can't form I really wanted it. to see it. All I said was I heard it did really well sarcastically. Yeah. I didn't say it was good or bad. Yeah. So I can say that. Well, it went up against Thor Ragnarok. So sure. Poor um, decision making. Question for you. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to hear "When You Wish Upon a Star" in a mariachi style? Sure. Kids, you can at the beginning of Coco. Weird. What, when they do the whole logo, yeah, it's mariachi, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." Uh, the they open the film really beautifully. Do you love the beginning of Beauty and the Beast, where like they tell the story of the prince on the on the stained glass windows? Yeah, they do this in Coco with like the tapestry flags that hang around the town, and it's so cute and beautiful. I just love it. It's great. What's that? What's that face? I'm gonna leave. Really? Yeah. This is too much. Yeah, too much. Too much detail. Yeah, too much detail. You're going to get out of here. I'm going to leave. Okay, I'm going to finish this alone then. Get out. Bye, guys. Well, apparently my review of Coco is getting a little bit too spoilery for Aaron, so he has left the room, and I'll finish this by myself. So I guess take that as a warning. If you haven't seen Coco yet, perhaps uh, this is spoiling too much for you. But um, let's see. The There's a great moment, if you don't know... Um, uh, the the family uh, is a family of shoemakers. I just there's a great moment where they're making these shoes and they they're on this spinning machine and the the sole of the shoe gets shot up into the ceiling and you see in the ceiling a bunch of these shoes hanging there and um, I just thought to myself when I saw that it is such a great imagineering opportunity. I bet you if we get a frozen uh, not frozen I'm sorry a cocoa uh, attraction which from what I hear Mexico Pavilion probably going to happen I wouldn't be surprised if we see this fun little detail in uh, a queue of some sort or, or may, maybe a scene in the attraction. I thought it was a very funny moment. Um, what else? Oh, the pedal bridge. If you've, you've seen this in the trailers, even if you haven't seen the movie, the bridge that connects the world of the living to the land of the dead. Um, the It's it's just this beautiful bridge that's like looks like flower petals falling and kind of glowing. That was another thing that I thought to myself, I can't wait to see what Imagineers do with this. I feel like it would be cool to see them like create something like this for real but i feel like maybe in a map projection way we might see something like that um I don't know. It's a, such a beautiful visual. Um, you've seen it in the trailer, even if you haven't seen the film. Uh, Dante the dog, I got to say, reminded me so much of Gerald the sea lion in uh, Finding Dory, if you remember that ridiculous, funny character. I don't know. There's something about the facial features, the the comedy that we get from this character as well. I just got a really Dante, vi- or, uh, Gerald vibe from Dante. It was pretty cool. Um, Miguel, <laughs> when he's being trained, how to... Uh, how Owl for the crowds and stuff. Such fun, fun, fun moments. The the voice performer, Anthony Gonzalez, is the voice of Miguel. Top notch. Like, really, I love... It, it kind of brought me back to Pinocchio when they had, a, you know, a real little boy voice in Pinocchio and Miguel is the voice, uh, is I'm sorry, what's his, Anthony is the voice of Miguel in the film. Such a great, like, real child performance, I felt, for the role. Oh, such a good performance. Interestingly enough, I did not realize this going in. I, I saw this watching the credits of the film. Uh, Kristen and Robert Lopez, who are famous for writing the music for Frozen, of course, wrote the song Remember Me, which is like the main song of the movie. I was very surprised it is by this. I didn't know this going in, and I don't know. It didn't really sound like them to me, so bravo, I would say. It showed a lot of um, range, I guess, for them. It was very cool. One thing that I didn't care about in the movie... They have these spirit animals in the Land of the Dead that I really did not like the look of them. I, I It looked, the best way to put it, I feel like, is it looked like an Illumination character, Illumination of the folks who make, like, the minions and such. It felt like a Disney downgrade, in my opinion, as far as animation style goes. I don't know, for young kids, they're really bright and colorful. Maybe it's appealing to them. Uh, it was probably the weakest point for the movie for me. Um... Now, since Aaron's not here, I'm going to go into a deep spoiler here. If you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you fast forward a bit here because I'm going to spoil the end. Uh, if 
you've seen the movie, you know that in the end we learn that Ernesto de la Cruz is not who he seems to be. He's a murderer. He is not Miguel's father. Um, we learn who Miguel's father is. And the th one thing that really bothered me is the the body type in the photo. So we see the photo of of the the mom and who we think is Ernesto the entire time. And Ernesto has a very like broad body type. And then um, the character who actually is Miguel's father has a very slim body type. And in that photo with the head ripped off, it's a very broad body. And I feel like they really, uh, they obviously did that to, I think, trick us more and make us not think that it could have been him. Um, so I just kind of call BS on that personally. I It's two very, very different body types. And I, I just think it doesn't, with the head that actually belonged there, it's not the right body. And I think they did that to trick us. So I'm not crazy about that. But uh, overall, seriously, Coco, my favorite favorite Pixar film since at least Toy Story 3, which was in 2010. So it's seven years. It's quite a long time. There have been quite a few films in between there. Um, but I would say easily in my top three Pixar films of all time. Like, I think of the Toy Story film. I kind of count the Toy Story films as one movie. So Toy Story films, and then Up, I loved, and, and Coco. Like, really, really, really tremendous movie. I will say, if you haven't seen it yet, and you're back in because you skipped the spoiler part, wait through the end credits. There's a nice little uh, a little tribute at the end. Uh, quote on the screen says, to the people across time who supported and inspired us. They basically dedicate to the film, the film to them, and then they show a lot of different photos of people who are an inspiration to them. Uh, Walt Disney is on there, and I believe I saw Don Rickles as well, who's the voice of Mr. Potato Head. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful tribute. I loved it. Um, and I gotta say, though, the one thing that surprised me, I didn't find the movie to be nearly as emotional as um, a lot of people did. Um, I didn't cry, and that's fine. I don't think that that's, that's, like, takes away from the movie or anything. But I had heard from people, like, oh, this is Toy Story 3 Sad, this is Upside, both of which I think I did cry at both of those. Uh, this one I didn't so much. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I didn't find it as emotional as a lot of people did, but I think I loved it as much as a lot of people, if not more. Um, really, really favorite movie of mine. So if you didn't go see Coco yet, like Aaron, go run to the theater now, check out Coco. Love to hear what you think of it. But for now, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for my Coco review. It's it's a great, great movie. Go check it out. So I'll bring uh, back Aaron back in a minute. But of course, uh, that means it's trivia time. Hey folks, and welcome to Trivia Time. Today I have Corey on the show from NoMidnightPodcast.com. How's it going, Corey? Good, good. I'm excited to do this one. Um, our, if I can blow away our topic, yeah, I am a ahead. huge fan of musicals. Nice. And uh, the topic you challenged me with was Broadway musicals, and I was like, ha, got mm -hmm. this. This cool. one's going to be fun. Disney on Broadway. Yes, indeed. So what, since you're so excited, why don't you hit me with a question first? All right, I'll go first. Uh, which Disney musical is, as of now, the ninth longest running Broadway musical of all time with over 5,000 performances? I would have to guess The Lion King? Wrong. Wait a sec. Say it again. Say, say the question again. <laughs> You're like, edit. Which, not... Disney, <laughs> which Disney musical is... On Broadway? On Broadway is, as of now, the longest running the ninth longest running Broadway musical of all time with over 5,000 performances. Okay, so Lion King must be much higher than ninth place then. Uh, so the only other show on Broadway is Aladdin at the moment. No, no, it's, it's not. Oh, it's not It's holding running. the record for the ninth gotcha, longest gotcha, as gotcha. of now. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to go with Beauty and the Beast. That is correct. Good job. What number is Lion King, do you know? They must be I like don't. third or something. I don't. I'm very low tech. I wrote my question on, <laughs> on a, um, a Cabana Bay pad. And <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, okay. So Beauty and the Beast holds the ninth place. Yeah. I'm guessing Lion King's probably around two or three. It's got to be up there. I know, in... I know Phantom's still number one, but yeah. Lion King's got to be up there. The, the day that Phantom of the Opera closes on Broadway is going to be like, it's going to be weird. And I'm not a huge fan of that show, to be honest. It's my favorite. Is it really? Yeah. I don't know. I actually never saw it on Broadway. Saw it in Boston, a tour. So good. And um, yeah, under Lion King though, that's, it's, now I got to go check. It's got to be second or third. But um, uh, my question for you is about uh, the flagship theater that Disney uses for their Broadway shows is the new Amsterdam theater. And, Beautiful uh, theater. 
It is a gorgeous theater. I've seen a couple shows in there. Do you know the first show that, or the first production that Disney put in that theater? It was Lion King. It was not Lion King. Really? A lot of people think it was. It, that was the, the long running show, but there's actually another show, music by Alan Menken. It ran for about a week. It was, I don't want to say a concert. But it ran for a week? Yeah, but it was not supposed to run a long time. It was okay. a show created to open the theater uh, in May of 97. Then no, I do not. Okay, you need to go to YouTube and listen to the music of King David was the show. Wow. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Seriously, some of the best Alan Menken music you'll ever hear. Um, Judy Kuhn was in it, who is the vo- the singing voice of Pocahontas. Uh, she sings a co- song called Never Again. If you go- if you just do uh, King David cast album on YouTube, you'll find the full album. It's stunningly beautiful music. Uh, I love it very, very much. And yeah, it, it's, that's the show that really opened the theater. Was then, that was that before before they did the big restoration, or was that was no, that did that, they restore it before they opened it? No, they restored it, and then they did King David, and then I also believe they had the world premiere of uh, Hercules the movie there. Uh, I'm not sure if that fell before King David or after. Of course, that was a movie, not a theater piece. But um, that's what brought the Hercules Main Street Electrical Parade to Times Square. Oh, and, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, and then King David, and then soon after that. Lion King started previews. So. And then uh, I've only seen one show in that theater. I saw Mary Poppins in that theater. I saw Lion King and Mary Poppins. Lion King is the first show I ever saw on Broadway. Wow. And it was in the first year of the Lion King. So I saw uh, Sam Wright, the voice of Sebastian, play Mufasa, which was awesome. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a great show. Anyway, thanks so much for joining for Trivia Time. As I mentioned, you can check out his crazy show, No Midnight Podcast, at nomidnightpodcast.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. Happy to do it. So, Aaron, uh, you missed some some good Coco stories. I, I I'm not because I'm gonna go see the movie and form all my own opinions you, about it. You've taken far too long. <laughs> it's it's been less than a week since the movie came it's out. It's been exactly a week actually. Yeah, it came out on Tuesday. We released on Wednesdays. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get going, thanks so much for joining. I do want to remind you, this is your last chance. If you want a Disney Coast to Coast 2018 calendar with a Disney Coast to Coast T-shirt, this is the last chance to order the combo. Monday, December fourth is the last day to order that. I got to send those shirts to the printers. So do it. Go to DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Order that right now. Why haven't you ordered it yet? I don't know. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Want to give some iTunes shout outs? Sure, let's, let's do, do it. it. To Allison She. Hi, Allison She. Thanks so much for going to iTunes, leaving us that five star written review. Always appreciated. That's nice. And Steph Elizabeth Dane. What? Steph Elizabeth Dane. <laughs> yeah, that's the name. Wow. Thank you very much for leaving a five star written review on iTunes. It helps other Disney fans find the show. So if you haven't done it yet, go do, do it. Because we would appreciate and it. And if you don't know how to, you can go to DisneyCoastToCoast.com, click on the frequently asked questions, and there should be a link there to help you out. Boop. And, but seriously, the new iTunes has made it a lot easier to leave. Oh, has it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. Good. Um, but I think that's going to do Did it for this Did you update week. your FAQ? Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah, it's all good. Nice. (laughs) Uh, Guys, thanks so much for joining. I hope you enjoy the holidays at the Disneyland Resort. If you're going, we'll see you next time. Have a magical week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. (laughs) 